Using the Barnett Big Blanket, I'd like to share a very easy project that you could make in 15 minutes. No tools required. This is a jumbo size 7 bulky yarn. You can do everything by hand. This yarn is also machine washable. To start this pillow, you're going to want about a foot of extra yarn at the bottom. So we'll leave a foot, then here we're going to start a slip knot. A slip knot is really just an open knot, so I use my fingers to gauge approximately maybe three, four fingers, and now I'm going to create the slip knot. So you're going to want your loops to be approximately about four inches in diameter. So I gauge that using my index finger and my thumb. Then I'm going to take that working yarn and I'm going to pull through a loop and more loops. This is creating a chain and I'm going to chain 13 stitches. If you want the pillow to be a little bit bigger, you can actually chain more onto this, maybe 15 or 20, but I'm just going to show you a medium sized pillow. Once I've created this chain, I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into a circle. So we're going to take the two loops that now chain it together. And we're going to be using that back bump of each stitch. What I generally like to do is actually put the tail into the middle. So that way it's not in my way. So take the two end stitches and now you're going to pull a loop through both and that's going to attach your circle. So the chain that you've created actually kind of looks like a braid. So I'm going to be using that very back loop around the entire circle to pull up a new row of stitches. And the stitches again are all the same size, approximately about four inches. You'll want to make your stitches back to back. So you'll be using that back loop on the braided chain all the way around and you'll have the same amount of stitches you started with. So I started with 13. Where the tail starts, then you know your row is finished now that you're in a circular motion. I'm going to keep going around so this way I can create three rows in a circle. Again, if you'd like the pillow to be a little bit larger, just make your chain a little bit longer. You do not need a specific number of chained loops. To create this size, took one ball of the jumbo yarn. So I proceeded to go around and again, I made three rows of stitches into a circular motion. But what we're going to want to do is we're going to want that circle to now fold and we want our stitches to be a little closer together. Just to give the circle a little bit of bulk before we fold it to continue the stitches, I found that the three rows was probably the most helpful. Again, to know where your rows stop and start, you're going to go by the tail. You'll see where the tail starts and finishes. This way you can gauge when you're ready to fold the circle into half. The main reason we want to fold this circle in half, so this way we're going to be able to get those stitches a little bit closer together. If we keep stitching in a circle, basically what will happen is it will go too far wide. So we want to bring that in a little bit closer. And we're always going to be able to gauge our row because the row is in half now when we come back to the tail. So the tail is kind of your start and finish. So again, this is going to bring those stitches nice and close together. Your loops will always remain the same size. So again, use your finger and your thumb to kind of gauge about a four inch width for your loops. So I will be starting my fourth row of the pillow. And again, I'm using that marker where the tail is as an indicator that I have to go all the way around. So I'll continue to make those loops and I'll have to keep flipping the pillow back and forth and using that tail as my indicator that I've completed a full row. Now because we're in a folded situation, you want to make sure that your stitches are flat and you want to make sure that they're not turning. If it's turned a little bit, just make sure it's turned the correct way before you add another loop. So for my pillow size, I'll do a total of nine rows. 
If you wanted it a little bit bigger and you're gonna start the chain with 15 or 20 stitches, you may wanna go up to about 15 rows. This project is incredibly quick, so it's fun. If you do happen to make a small mistake, no big deal to unravel it and start again as the project doesn't take any time at all. Again, I'm using that tail as my marker that I've finished my row. The way this project is positioned, it is very easy to have the stitches kind of turn a little bit and because it's so bulky. So you definitely want to make sure that the stitches are placed correctly. It's pretty easy to gauge if the stitch is turned as it is super bulky. This type of yarn is super soft and plush and it makes great decor, perfect little round pillows for your chairs, or it's a great way to add a pop of color as this type of yarn comes in so many beautiful shades. So again, I find it helpful to kind of always push the pillow a little bit flat as I keep flipping it back and forth, and this too will help straighten out my loops. I count the braid knots on the side to tell me exactly how many rows I've already done and I'm just finishing my sixth row. I've even created a huge ottoman for the living room using this exact pattern and four balls of the chunky chenille yarn. So many fun projects you can use with this super chunky yarn. When I wash this type of yarn, I always use a delicate and cold cycle just to be on the safe side. I let it air dry and then I'll put it in the dryer for a little bit of a fluff. Once I get to my ninth row, I'll show you how to close the bottom as well as the top. They'll be a little bit different for both ends. And as you can see, it's really easy to count your rows, so this way you can know exactly when you're ready to stop. Again, this project only took one ball of the chunky chenille yarn. So this makes for a really inexpensive gift, and it's a handmade gift, which makes for wonderful gift ideas for any occasion. I really wanted to share the entire project from start to the end. That's why I decided just to go with the one small, easy, fast DIY. This way you can create your project along with the video. Now that I'm getting into my last row, I've noticed actually I have a little extra yarn, so I decided to actually add one more row. So now I'm going to actually have 10 full rows. If you don't have any polyfill, for the insert, you could always use an old pillow and just take the stuffing from the inside, or you could even use old small hand towels or dishcloths that you're no longer using or you were going to recycle out. You could even use old scrap material from any of your sewing projects, or if you have some scrap yarn, you could also use that for a uh, the inside of the pillow. I have some polyfill that I'll be using, but I just wanted to give some ideas in case you didn't have any. So now that I'm going to be finished 10 full rows, it's going to be time to close the pillow. So I'll start with the bottom and then we'll close the top. Now because we're going to close the bottom, there are already looped stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at that chain and I'm going to wrap that tail all the way around the back loop of the chain. So you're just going to keep wrapping stitch into stitch on the back loop, but I do recommend not to do the whole thing at once without pulling that tail a little bit because it's all quite tight at the bottom there. And this yarn is quite strong, but it can break. So you want to be careful just to do a few loops, then pull it and then do a few more loop rings, and I go from the inside out on the back loop of the chain. So just keep going around, pulling it, and going into each stitch, going from the inside to the outside on the back loop of that chain. Once you start to get to the end of your tail, you're gonna pull it, so this will actually close the bottom of the pillow. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna tie a knot. And this will secure the bottom of the pillow. Once you get to the end of the tail and you've pulled everything nice and firm into place, like I mentioned, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the residual of the tail to the inside and create a knot. And this will help secure that bottom end. 
So this is why it's really important to leave about a foot when you start the pillow. This is gonna give you the security for the bottom of it, and it's gonna leave you enough yarn to make that knot on the inside. Once I finish my last loop, I'll stick the remaining yarn into the hole, and then I'll open up the pillow from the inside, and I'm gonna use an inside stitch so it's inconspicuous, you won't see it, and we're gonna tie a knot on the inside, and then whatever remaining tail that you have will just be part of the fill on the inside of the pillow. Now that the bottom of the pillow is secured, I can put my fill in, and like I mentioned, you can use whatever you have on hand to put inside the pillow, just to give it that bulk to keep the shape. Depending on how firm you want the pillow will determine how much fill you want to put inside the pillow. Now I want to show you how I'm going to close the top of the pillow. So I'll go ahead and put some polyfill inside the pillow. I'm not going to use very much as I like my pillows to be a little bit on the softer side. But if you prefer the pillow to be a little bit firmer, you're just going to use a little extra polyfill in the center. So I'm going to make sure to leave myself about a foot left in the working yarn. This way I'll have enough to close the chains at the top. So what I'm going to do is grab two loops, take that working yarn, and pull it through two at a time. I like to chain only by using the two at a time as I start to close. This way I don't miss any of the loops at the top, so I only take two at a time. Plus this way it's a little easier to work with because the yarn itself is so bulky. So just take two loops, sandwich them together, and keep pulling the working yarn all the way around the top of the pillow. As I keep going, I will actually pull the actual top close. Not a lot, not until I get to the very end, but this way I, I'm not going to pull the yarn too hard once I get all the loops on the working yarn. Now because I started with 13 stitches, I'm going to reuse the first loop and pull the working yarn through and now the pillow is closed. So you can just keep pulling until you actually have a little tiny button hole left. I'm going to stick that working yarn into the pillow. I'm going to have to kind of feel with my hand an inside stitch. This way I can pull the working yarn around that inside stitch, make a knot, and you won't see it from the outside. Pull my knot nice and tight. Once I've done that, I will cut off the remaining of the tail. I try to leave a little tiny, tiny bit by pushing it back. Only in preference, I like to make a little button into the center with the working yarn. And that's just a preference. You don't have to do that. So again, all I did was make the knot and then take the working yarn, push it back in and pull it back up through the hole to just kind of make a little faux button. Thank you so much for watching this week's video and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Until then, take care.